Right, today I'm going to look at this Navman GPS dash cam. Now this was in my car for a while, I actually got quite a bit of footage of this thing. And it started playing up and dying and, and just being a bit unhappy. I think the internal battery has basically died, or if it's, maybe it's got a super capacitor, or you've got no idea. Let's pull it apart and have a look at it and see if I can figure out what's going on with it because right now it's basically useless. Now I've already replaced this but the dash cam I put in I'm not actually happy with. This was better. Um, so i really like to get this one going again. We'll see how lucky we get. So it's got some rubber plugs under here. I think they probably pull out. Yep, there are, look. There's little screws under there. There you go. Great. Get our screws out and see how we go. I've taken our screws out. Let's see what happens. Oh, here we go. Ah, oh, there we go. Right. So you've got two little flexes for the screen. There's GPS module. Because it's got a touch screen on it, so obviously one is for touch. Yeah, there we go. Standard connector. Right. So I've basically lifted the tape off there. So I think that will then push the tabs out of the way or lift the tab maybe. Lifting your tab. There we go, that's out. And this one here is probably the same deal. Peel that off. Lift the tab. There's the screen off. Okay. Now obviously the battery's buried in there somewhere. Long Wang's Touch BD. Long Wang, eh? Alright, let's get some more screws out. Choosing this little screwdriver because it's convenient and it happens to be the right size. And if I can't get it working again, I haven't lost anything because it's already not working now. But obviously I would like to get it working. Do this carefully because obviously you've got the cameras attached to the front panel. Because there's probably another flex somewhere. GPS is coming out with it. And oh, okay, it's got a um interesting setup down there. It's got a connector here. I can't quite see what's going on there. Okay, so a little ribbon with a wire there. There's another connector. Connector like that. Pushes in. Just slide that out. It's also got this and one on the other side, which is like microphones. And maybe a speaker. Okay. And unfortunately they're soldered in, so can that lift out? So I think the microphone is down there. There we go, the microphone's out. This one doesn't want to come out, there we go. That's got it. Right, so there's obviously the main logic board. The brain behind the whole thing. Again, the problem isn't on here. Maybe it's behind this shield. Let's keep digging. I think there's probably um, the tape has peeled us off here. Yet more screws. And it actually looks like it's bulged slightly, so maybe there's a issue behind there after all. And I think it'd be shaped like that from factory. Yeah, metal shield, and there's the battery, which is indeed solar up. Just try and lift it out with these. Trying not to penetrate, obviously. There we go. So there's a battery pack, which doesn't feel soft, it just feels lumpy. So I don't know. What's underneath here? What does it say? 500 milliamp hours, 3.7 volts, I'm guessing, 1.85 watt hours. And that's what's on the back. That's what I need, is one of these. It's interesting why it's lumpy, but not bulging. Hmm, not quite what I was expecting. So let's check voltages on that battery connector. There's nothing there at all. So what I think I'm going to do is plug it into the actual board and plug power into it and see if it will try and start charging or not. Um, I just want to see if there's any 
power on the board itself as well. So I've got a connector there too, we'll recheck there. There's nothing showing up at all. Okay, so let's plug power into this and see what happens. Obviously the camera itself and the screen aren't hooked up, so I don't know if it will like that or not. It may do something weird, but let's just go with this first and see what happens. It's not really drawing any power, so I don't think anything's really going to be happening. There you go, got four volts on there. Jumping around. Like it's trying to charge something, but it's not there. It's 0.7 there. Nothing. I think it's in some kind of protection state, or maybe it's overcurrenting too much current, and so it's shutting off the charge circuitry. That's possible to hear something from the little speaker there if it was actually trying to power up. So I don't think it's trying to power up. Interesting, that's a four pin connector. The battery's only got three wires. So the very right hand pin has got no connection. I'm pretty sure the battery's dead. So I've had a quick look online, I can't find this exact battery, at least not straight away. I might just try and see on. But that battery model is not exactly available, but I can find a basically identical thing. 500 milliamp hours, 3.7 volts, same kind of size, even a circuit board on the end looks very similar. It isn't exactly the same, but it's very similar. I can replace this, which would be good because it means I can get this thing back up and going. The problem is, the ones online, all these boards, they've only got two wires and not three. So the black wire is indeed marked as P negative, the red wire is P positive, and the blue wire is marked as T on that circuit board. Could be a temperature sensor, but it's only a single wire. I think I might need to dissect this to actually have a closer look at this and figure this out. So let's do that. The pack is already dead, there's no power in it, so it's, you know, just cut it. It's not like to catch him fire, is it? Well, it could, but, you know. The fact there's no voltage in it whatsoever means this pack is completely dead. What I'm hoping I can do is um, slice the tape and then just fold this over and have a closer look at the actual circuitry on this board and the connections. Alright, so there's the protection board. And then you can see you've got the tape of it, so P minus, P positive, and the T. Got some resistors on there, a couple of chips, which DW01, which is the classic protection IC. And we've got a, was that, 8205, is it? I think it says 8205. Don't know what that it is, it's probably a MOSFET. That's what's on there, not much. And there's the back. Two battery connections only. I measured the battery pack voltage, the actual cell itself, and it is 0.5 volts. So, a bit dead. So I've just plugged power in. It just made a sound, so it's tr actually booted up. I made a sound, actually. I think it's booted, but it's seeing, giving an error. Maybe, I don't know, I made a noise. Battery voltage is not increasing. So I don't think it's actually trying to charge the battery at all. I think the uh, protection circuitry is doing its thing and actually cutting it off. So there you go, that's a voltage there. See, it's trying to charge it, and nothing's happening. And so the protection circuitry would be doing its thing and stopping it from working. One eternity later. So the battery's arrived. I've got two different types, so I wasn't quite sure which one's going to fit best. I was hoping this one would fit, but it's not going to fit. Because this one's got a beat with thermistor. The other battery alternative, this one here, doesn't have a built-in thermistor. Which makes it a bit more complicated. Not impossible, but a bit more complicated. This is the original battery, and I've taken the control board off it. Protection board. Just cut the little nickel strips that go to the battery normally right I cut those off really carefully not to short them out this one here is basically a fully charged battery it measured four volts across the cell now what I've done is I've unwrapped the tape around it so I can expose the cell end all right so there's the protection board on there and it's basically the same thing except it doesn't have a thermistor on it so it's actually like equivalent chips equivalent circuitry it's got a DWO one on there just like this board does that sort of stuff so electrically they're almost identical apart from the lack of thermistor so there's two ways I could go about this. I could get the wires of this one, desolder them, attach them to this, and add a thermistor externally to the board. Or, I could take this board off and attach this one to it. I just got a spot welder. I've just got one. I've never used it yet. It probably works. Do I want to find out if it works by doing this? I could cut this off here, cut those tabs there, and there's enough left on there the spot weld onto the tabs on here and then the correct orientation that I should be able to actually spot weld onto the original on there and just transfer the board over between the cells. I'm really tempted to do that rather than resoldering wires. Now this cell as well when I got this I was a bit concerned actually because this the way this is attached these wires running across the back of that strip and as will taped up like this 
So from this side you can see that there's a potential there to short those wires out against that strip. Pretty sure that's not a good thing. <laughs> you can see the traces there for R3. One goes to the T and the other one goes to the P negative. All right, so R3 is the thermistor. I tried the spot welder out. It worked absolutely fine. So I'm gonna actually try welding this now. And we'll see how we go. Using default settings on the welder, whatever they are, I don't know, I've got no idea how to use it. But it turns on, it welds as it is, so I'm gonna try that. So I stick one terminal on there. I'll try and make sure the strip is definitely pushed right down hard. So I'm doing lots of welds, trying to make sure it does actually bed down and, and sit. Give it some more. Once it's actually aligned, it should be right. But right now, I'm just trying to get it sitting right. There we go. Okay. Well, I've got lots of welds. I think that's on there. Now let's do the other one. I mean, really, you just have to do it once. In reality, it should be what it needs, but uh, I'm not completely sure I've got a good bedding on it. Right. Hopefully that's actually on okay. Seems to be. It's on. Let's get some cats on tape. Right, I've got the battery back in again now. I've um, got to try and shoehorn everything back together. Now this battery cable is a bit different because the orientation is opposite to what it was in the other battery or something. But anyway, it will kind of go in. I'm just going to have to try and massage it into place. I've got the microphone here which I've got to put down into there. I've got this foam pad here which has the NASA to wedge it in. That's the tricky bit is getting those bits in place and then I can plug the battery in and flip it over, plug the screen and stuff in and hopefully it all works. Well I've got it back together to this point which is now the point where I need to put the screen back on. I've got these two screws that I'll take out because I've put them there so I wouldn't lose them. Just not much space which is what makes it tricky. So I think I've got the flexes on, let's see if it turns back on. Hey, you've got a screen, that's a good start. No SD card, that's fine. Does the touch screen work? Touch screen does work. Yay, that'll work. Okay. Obviously it is an SD card, but uh, shove it down again for now. Working again. Brilliant. Alright, I've got it back together. I'll put the SD card in, let's plug power in and see what we get. Hopefully it all still works. Okay, it's booted. Battery is shown as charging. Um, in terms of recording and stuff like that, so that's working. Touch screen's working, so I think I'm happy with that. I can go and put that back in the car again. Nice, because the one I've got in the car now, I don't actually like that much. It works, but I can't very easily things like, you know, on this one I can tap the icon there right and that does emergency recording really handy but the other one I've got now it doesn't do that if I want to get a clip off it I can't just like tap it I, I have to actually go back and look at the footage and try and find it I can't flag it as a as a locked clip once it's locked on here it will stay locked it will stay there it won't delete it and it won't you know over overwrite it when it's doing the loop recording so uh, yeah anyway um, I'm happy with that it's working Unplug that, it's running the battery, should be shut down. Go into parking mode, it will shut down by itself. Oh, no, no. apparently had a crash. <laughs> subscribe over there if you're not already subscribed. Videos down below if you want to watch one of them. And there's a Patreon support link over there if you want to support the channel. Maybe help me buy a better dash cam. Hi. Right.